Hello guys, we're doing this session on um, CAT 2017 actual quant paper. We're doing the session for the uh, for the first session in the morning slot. So we're going to have a go at solving this paper and a, a, a bunch of uh, an outline on what we plan to do. We're going to take this session as is. So this is going to be a, a session based on how it would have been uh, in CAT. So I'm going to I'm not going to be elaborate in my explanations and solutions and descriptions and all of that. I'm going to solve this as if I were sitting in a classroom in, in an exam center taking this exam. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go berserk uh, really quickly, jumping from question to question and, and traversing through this. I'm assuming you guys have seen the, the paper. If you've not seen it, then you should probably check out the CAT 2018 sample paper. It's, I'm told they're the same. Or you can scroll through the description here at the end of the session and you'll be able to find a PDF of the actual paper. Right? Once again, this is going to be a shot at going and solving slot one quant in one hour as if it were an exam scenario. So I'm going to solve this like a student. So I'm going to try to explain my way uh, every now and then so that you're, it is clear what I'm trying to do. But my focus will be on solving. So keep that in mind. Today is a, it's a, it's a good day to start many things. That's what the uh, uh, the script says so best wishes for your cat preparation best wishes for a bunch of mocks that you're going to take and uh, best wishes for the for the d-day taking the exam and cracking it well and so i'm going to start in a couple of minutes the plan for this is all the questions the the good, the good guys in our team 2im and they put all of those one by one on a on a large ppt so i'm going to look at the question and then go berserk trying to solve it we will be typing in the questions here in the comments page as well so you can see the relevant question but i am going to try to solve as many of the 34 questions possible in 60 minutes fine so this is going to be a a, a a simulation of a live mock if this were a mock how am i going to attempt it that's what i'm going to try to recap i'm going to try to talk my way through this so that you have an idea of what i'm doing but uh, uh, more of my effort will be on trying to solve and crack not on trying to go from basics and trying to explain. So there's probably a good session to get a feel for how someone goes through the, the paper and not the best session to learn something from, from zero. You have to find some other avenue of doing that. Right? Um, all disclaimers aside, I'm going to jump in and, and solve it. I'm sincerely hoping I don't embarrass myself. So I have take, though I did take the exam, I took it on the afternoon slot. So this is the morning slot. So um, I'm going to have a go and about, I'm going to share the screen and uh, uh, go on to the the PPT, which has all the questions and, and gaps for all the solutions. And I'm going to go berserk trying to solve it. I will be skipping questions, jumping across uh, papers, uh, leaving them and coming back for later, all of that. So keep that in mind. So anytime you have any queries, questions, do, do shoot on the comments page. Because I will be completely on screen share mode. I won't be able to see it. But there are guys in the office who, will, who, who, who should come back and say something is wrong. Right. Super guys, uh, that is the disclaimer set of disclaimers I want to do. Now we're going to start off. I'm going to share the screen and then start this exam as if I were sitting in an exam center and solving just the quant section. Obviously, it's that little bit easier because you won't get tired and all that. But uh, nevertheless, we should have a good session trying to have a go at the entire quant section. This is CAT 2017 actual CAT slot one. Right. Once again, I hope but I have a good go at it and do not uh, and get a good score. So let's go, let's do this screen share. Share the screen. Here goes. CAT 2017 slot one quantitative ability. So I'm starting by 11 4 my watch. I'm going to stop by 12 4 my watch. Right. Go. Arun's percentage in years is 40% of Barun's. In another few years, Arun's age will be half of Barun's. By what percentage? So Arun's percentage 2x, Barun's percentage 5x. In another few years, will be half of Barun's. So 2x plus y, 5x plus y. That is y years later. This is half of this. 2 times 2x plus y is 5x plus y. 4x plus 2y is 5x plus y or y equal to x or Barun's age was 5x is going to become 6x so 2x and 5x become 3x and 6x y is same as x by what percentage will Barun's age increase Barun's age increases by x out of 5x 
that is 20% done. So this is, the, this is a slide we have let go for marking the answer. The answer is 20%. The theta question, by what percentage will it increase? By 20%. Go to the next one. A person can complete a job in 120 days. He works alone on day one. On day two, he is joined by another person who also can complete in 120 days. Day three, another person of equal efficiency like this. Every day, a new person with the same efficiency joins the work. How many days are required to complete this? And so I'm going to say, instead of doing, I'm going to do this slightly differently. First day, one guy. Second day, two guys. Third day, three guys. Four, five, six, and so on. And this total has to add up to 120. And so this is one man day. This is two man days, three man days, four man days, five man days, and so on. Totally, we need to have 120 man days. Thankfully, they're all of equal efficiency. I'm going to jump across and say 15. We have 15 into 16 by 2. N into N plus 1 by 2. 15 into 8 is 120. So this will get completed in 15 days. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way till 15. That's the answer you're looking for. Now done. Next. An elevator has a weight limit of 630 kilograms. It is carrying a group of people of whom the heaviest weighs 57. The lightest weighs 53. What is the maximum possible number of people in the group? We want to find the maximum number of people. Keep 57 as it is. Add everybody else to 53. And the maximum number of people, each person should have the least weight possible. It should be at least one guy with 57. Subtract that. So this is 37573. 573 divided by 53 is 11. So 11 plus 1, 12 people. One guy weighing 57, 11 people weighing 53 each. That takes us to 630. 11 is the answer. Once again, theta, we're good to go. Man leaves his home and walks at a speed of 12 kilometers per hour, reaching the railway station 10 minutes after the train departed. Poor sod. If instead he wanted to walk at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour, he would have reached the station 10 minutes before the train's departure. Let's say the distance is D. D by 12 is one time taken. D by 15 is another time taken. The difference between these two times is 20 minutes. We're doing it in kilometers per hour. So it is one third of an hour. D by 12 equals D by 15 plus 1 by 3. D by 12 minus D by 15 is 1 by 3. LCM is 60. 5D minus 4D by 60 is 1 by 3, or D by 60 is 1 third. D is 20 kilometers. The distance in kilometers from his home to his railway station is 20 kilometers. Remember one thing that we did 10 minutes after, 10 minutes before. So I don't care about the actual time. The difference between these two times taken is 20 minutes, which is 1 third of an hour. You travel at 12 kilometers per hour or 15 kilometers per hour, the difference is 1 third. That's what we're looking to knock off. So 20 kilometers is the distance between home and railway station. We invest 50% of his monthly savings in fixed deposits. Oh, must be a rich guy. 30% of the rest of his savings is invested in stocks. And the rest goes into Ravi's savings back account. 50, 30% of the rest. 50% of his savings, 30% of the rest. So 30% of 50, 15. And the rest goes into Ravi's savings bank account, 35. The total amount deposited by him in the bank for savings account and fixed deposits. This is fixed deposits. This is savings account. Both put together is 59500. 85% of something is 59500. What is Ravi's total monthly savings? What is 100%? The key point here is 30% of the rest of his savings. So we do 595 by 85. Hopefully this 595 will be a nice multiple of 85. If it is not, we are in trouble. Let's divide by 5. We should get 119 by 17. This is 7 times our monthly savings is 70,000. Ravi's total monthly savings in rupees is 70,000. Wonderful. Remember, this is 50% of the rest of his savings. The seller gives a discount of 15% of retail price. She still makes a profit of 2%. Which of the following ensures that she makes a profit of 20%? Cost price is, let's say, selling price is X. So the marked price is X. So selling price would be 0.85X, which is giving a 15% on retail price. 
she still makes a profit of 2% or cost price. This is equal to 1.02 times cost price. Which of the following ensures that she makes a profit of 20%? So 0.85x equals 1.02 CP. 1.2 CP. What is that number? And then we can come back and see what discount that is. And so I think I'm making something, some mistake here. On a discount of 15% on retail price, she still makes a profit of 2%. She wants to make a profit of 20%. So the discount should be much lower. What it is, let's do this. 0.85 into 1.2 by 1.02. This is 5 by 6. 5 6 of 1.2 is 1 sell at retail price instead of selling at a 15 percent discount you should sell at the retail price or the mark price to make a profit of 20 percent mark price is x selling price is 0.85 x this is 1.02 times cp if you want to make 1.2 times cp you should be selling at x done man travels by a motorboat down a river to his office and back with the speed of the river unchanged, if he doubles the speed of his motorboat, then his total travel time gets reduced by 75%. The ratio of the original speed of the motorboat to the speed of the river is an incredibly tough question. So the time taken, let's say his speed, his speed is x, boat speed is b. Distance is d. d by x plus b plus d by x minus b is a normal time taken. The special time taken in this case after he doubles the speed of his motorboat is d by 2x plus b plus d by 2x minus b this time taken equals this time taken into 7 by 4 why am i putting 7 by 4 75 percent the time gets reduced by 70 percent doing something wrong wonderful time gets reduced if he doubles the speed of his motorboat, then his total travel time gets reduced by 75%. This is total travel time. This is new travel time. This gets reduced by 75% or this number is one fourth of this number. It becomes 25% of what it was. And so D by X plus B plus D by X minus B. One fourth of that is D by 2X plus B plus D by 2X minus B. Ratio of original speed of motorboat to speed of the river. You're looking to find x by b and i'm going to write this down in the next slide so it fluttered just too much so one by d that completely disappears one by x plus b plus one by x minus b is four times one by two x plus b plus one by two x minus b and r one by x by b plus one no, no. let me do something i divide throughout by b and call x by b equal to k one by k plus one plus one by k minus one equals four times one by two k plus one plus one by two k minus one i need to find x by b or we need to find k and so I simplify this. This is k minus 1 plus k plus 1 by k square minus 1. This is 4k square minus 1, 2k plus 1 plus 2k minus 1. This goes off, this goes off, 4k. 16k by 4k square minus 1 equals 2k by k square minus 1. The k disappears. 16 goes away, we have 8, we have 8k square minus 1, 8k square minus 8 equals 4k square minus 1, or 4k square equals minus 1 plus 8, 4k square equals 7, k square equals 7 by 4, we're talking about a root ratio of root 7 is to root 4, but I'm not sure about this at all, this is probably something that I want to root 4 is 2, root 7 is 2, that exists is what I'm going to go after. But this is probably a question I should have skipped. And so, key idea here, knocking off that x by b as k and removing all variables. We start with three variables, d, x, and b. We knock off d at step 1, and x and b we simplify to k, because that's what we're looking for. 
C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5 are five companies. Profits made by C1, C2, C3 are in the ratio 9 is to 10 is to 8. C2, C4, C5. C2, C4, C5 are 18, 19, 20. Super. Now we need to simplify and get all of this into the same variable. We need to take the LCM of 10 and 18, which is 90. This is 90. So 10 to 9 is 90. This is 81 is to 90 is to 72. 9 is to 95 is to 100. So the overall ratio is like this. If C5 has made a profit of rupees 19 crores more than C1, this 100 minus 81 is exactly 19 crores. Total profit made by all five companies should be exactly these numbers. 81 plus 90 plus 72 plus 95 plus 100. 7, 8, 16, 25, 33, 3, 3, 4, 38 crores. We have a choice available here. Done. The number of girls appearing for an admission test is twice the number of boys. Girls, boys, X, 2X. If 30% of the girls and 45% of the boys, 0.6X. 0.45x and the percentage of turtle candidates who do not get admission those who get admission is 1.05x do not get admission is 1.95x divided by 3x 65 percent you're looking at this got it done again good question simple question no rock no no not rocket science all sells popcorn and chips in packets three sizes large super and jumbo large super jumbo the number of large super and jumbo packets in stock are in the ratio 7, 17, 16. Oh, for popcorn and for chips, it is 6, 15, 14. If the total number of popcorn packets in its stock is the same as the total number of chips packets, then the number of jumbo popcorn packets and the jumbo chips packets, okay, this is, let's say, total. 7 plus 17, 24 plus 16, 40. 21 plus 14, 35. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to bring everything to the same metric. What do I mean by that? These add up to 40. These add up to 35. Get 7x, 17x, 16x. This will be 40x. 6y, 15y, 14y should be 35y. Total is same. Take the LCM of 40 and 35. So 8 is to 7. So multiply this by 7. This, this LCM is 280. So what am I going to do? Large, small, jumbo, total, 280, 280. For popcorn, multiplying this by 7, 49x, 17 into 7, whatever. For uh, chips, we're multiplying by 8, 6 into 8, 48x, 48x, and so on. That, then the number of jumbo popcorn packets and jumbo chips packets. So jumbo popcorn and jumbo chips. So 16 into 7 and 14 into 8. That's what we're doing here. So 16 into 7 is to 14 into 8. This is 2 is to 1. This is 1 is to 2. We're talking about 1 is to 1. Wonderful. Done. So far, so good. Let's keep going. In the market, the price of medium quality mangoes is half that of good mangoes. Medium, good x 2x shopkeeper buys 80 kilograms good mangoes and 40 kilograms medium quality mangoes 80 and 40 sorry 80 kilograms good mangoes and 40 kilograms medium quality mangoes and then sells these at a common price which is 10 percent less than the price at which he bought the good ones so he's selling all 120 at 1.8 x his overall profit percentage his cost is 40 x plus 160x, which is 200x. This, this is selling price is 120 into 1 1.8, 18 into 12, so this is 216x, or you're looking at 8%. So this is a total cost price is 200, total selling price is 216. We're worried only about ratios, 100 is to 108, 8%. If Fatima sells 60 identical toys at a 40% discount on the printed price, then she makes 20% profit. Printed price x, selling price 0.4x, sorry, 0.6x. So she, this is 20% profit. So 1.2 times cost price is 0.6x or cost price is 0.5x. 
10 of the toys are destroyed in fire okay while selling the rest how much discount should be given on the printed price so that she can make the same amount of profit or she's selling it six the total money she makes is 60 into 0.6 x you should make this with 50 60 into 0.6 x is 50 into something or 3.6 x is 5 into something so this number is 0.72 x how much discount should be given on the printed price so that she can make the same amount of profit cost price doesn't change she makes the same profit or she should make the same revenue or she should make with 0.72x, she'd give a discount of 28%. A and B are integers of opposite signs such that A plus 3, the whole square is to B square is 9 is to 1. A minus 1, the whole square is to B minus 1, the whole square is 2 is to 1. And the ratio of A is to B is. I get it. A plus 3, the whole square. A plus 3 is to B should be 3 is to 1 or minus 3 is to 1 or 3 is to minus 1. So minus 3 and 1 or 3 and minus 1 or A minus 1 to B minus 1 or 2 and minus 1 and minus 1 and 2. But these are ratios. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be properly tricky. The ratio A is to B is not happy doing this i'm going to come back to this i think it's an interesting question but i'm going to come back to 30. class consists 20 boys and 30 girls what do i have the time 20 boys and 30 girls in the mid-semester exam average score of the five girls was five higher than the boys boys is to girls 20 and 30. average score of girls this is x this is x plus five the final exam however the average score of the girls dropped by three well, average score of the entire class increased by 2. In the mid-semester exam, x, x plus 5, giving an average of... The average should have been... You're mixing x and x plus 5. The difference 5 should be broken in the ratio 3 to 2. The overall average would have been x plus 3. Closer to the girls' one. This is the overall average. In the final exam, this is the midterm. So in the final thing, you have boys and girls, same 20 and 30. The average score of the boy of the girls dropped by 3. The so girls becomes x plus 2. While the average score of the entire class increased by 2. This so becomes x plus 5. So the boys should be higher. It should have been x plus 7. This difference is 3. This difference should have been 2. x plus 7. The increase in the average score of the boys is 7. It should be 7. What's wrong here? Let's go over this one more time. Mid-semester exam, the average score of the girls was 5 higher than that of the boys. So if boys were x, girls would have been x plus 5. So the overall average should have been x plus 3. Closer to the girls number, this ratio should have been 3 is to 2. Sorry, 2 is to 3, this difference. So x plus 5 minus x plus 3 should be 2, is 2 x plus 3 minus x should be 3. So the overall average should have been x plus 3. The average score of the girls dropped by 3. So the girls average becomes x plus 2. While the average score of the entire class increased by 2. The overall increased by 2. x plus 5. So what is the average of the boys? Boys to girls, the ratio of students is 2 is to 3. So this number is 3. This number should be 4.5 correct so the boy should have got 4.5 more than x plus 5 x plus 9.5 wonderful classic question where if you use the 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 the, the, the famous allegation method this becomes very simple let's talk on oops i'm really sorry about this my powerpoint seems to have crashed so i'm going to end that and then restart again I'm going to continue the screen share mode. So I'm going to obviously there's some amount of loss of privacy here. I'm going to live with that. I hope you guys are not looking at what we're doing. 
to number 14. I'm hoping to go back to 14. Now it should work. I still hope you guys can see the screen. We mark 9.5 here. Let's do this. The area enclosed in the region bounded by the equation mod x plus mod y equal to 2. This is a very simple question. Mod x plus mod y equal to 2. I've done this a bunch of times. I'm going to just rush through this. The, the answer I know is 8. Mod x plus mod y is 2 is a shape like this. 2 comma 0 minus 2 comma 0 0 comma 2 0 comma minus 2 so this is a square oh, this is 2 this is 2 this measures 2 root 2 2 root 2 2 root 2 8 from a triangle ABC with sides of length 40 25 35 a triangular person GBC 40 25 35 sides of length 40 25 so 5, 7, 10, that doesn't give me much. A, B, C, 40, 25, 35. G, B, C is cut off, where G is a centroid of A, B, C. That sounds good. Centroid cuts out the triangle into three triangles of equal area. So this is one third. The remaining portion should be two thirds of A, B, C. So 40, 25, and 35, absolutely featureless triangle. So I'm going to call it as 10, 5, 7. Then do perimeter. Perimeter is ratio is 10 is to 5 is to 7. We're just multiplying by 4. That I'll account for later. I'm going to find area of triangle ABC, 15, 22. Semi perimeter is 11. S minus A is square. We're doing square root of 11 into 1 into 6 into 4. There's no root 11, and I don't like that. 10 plus 5, 15 plus 7, 22. Half of 22 is 11. The so semi perimeter is 11. S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. 11 into 1 into 6 into 4. So this is square root of 66. So 2 times square root of 66 is area of this part. We are looking at this into 16, we multiplied by 4, into 2 by 3. We are not close anywhere. Oh, sorry, the ratio is 8, 5, 7, not 10, 5, 7. 8, 5, 7. That's the ratio of the sides. 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 7, 20. So semi perimeter is 10. So square root of 10 into 2 into 5 into 3. This is good. 2 into 5 is 10, so this is 10 root 3. That is the area of our 857 triangle. This 857 into 5 each side is. So the overall area of triangle ABC is 25 times 10 root 3. We are looking for an answer which is 2 thirds of this. 25 into 2 is 50, 15 into 10 is 500, 500 by root 3. Voila, here we go. Good. A, B, C, B, a right-angled isosceles triangle with hypotenuse B, C. I love this. I'm nailing this. I love isosceles right-angled triangle. B, C, A, 1 is to 1 is to root 2. Let B, Q, C be semicircle away from A with diameter B, C. Wonderful. Let B, P, C be an arc of a circle centered at A and lying between B, C and B, Q, C. Okay, so we're drawing a circle like this. If AB has length 6 centimeters, AC should also have length 6. This is 6 root 2. Area of region enclosed by BPC and BQC, this one. Wonderful. And so let's find uh, which is C, which is Q. This is Q, this is P. Area of semicircle BQC is pi into 6 root 2 the whole square. And so pi into 72, that is 72 pi. Now, area of this, this quadrant minus area of triangle will give us this. So area of segment BPC is 1 fourth of, that is not 6 root 2 square, pi into 3 root 2 square. So 9 into 2, 18, this is 18 pi. Here, 1 fourth of pi into 
six square. That is area of the whole, whole quadrant. And so that is six pi by four, which is nine pi. Something seems funny and wrong here. Area is pi r square by two. We're doing semicircle, semicircle. So it is 18 pi by two. This is nine pi. This is nine pi minus area of triangle half into six into six. Your six into three, 18 square units. So we're doing nine pi minus nine pi minus 18, which is 18, which is nothing but area of this triangle. Or the answer we are looking for is 18. Wonderful question. I kind of knew this because this this, this is a square plus b square equal to c square. So c square perimeter, and then you knock this off. The pi completely gets cancelled out. So it effectively left with area of a triangle, which is half into six into six, which is half into 36, 18 square units. Solid metallic cube is fitted, is melted to form five solid cubes whose volumes are in the ratio one is to 1 is to 8 is to 27 is to 27. 54, 62, 64. That works. The percentage by which the sum of the surface areas of these five cubes exceeds the surface area of the original cube is the nearest to. My God, amazing question. Wonderful question. You're melting it into five pots. So the, the original solid cube, I'm going to assume, has a side of four units. But this has three also. I'm going to assume it has a side of 12 units. Why 12? I want a number to be a multiple of three and of four. So the volume of my original cube is 12 cube, which is 1728. And I'm breaking that down. I'm going to do 12 into 12 into 12 by 64. So this knocks off three. Knock off a of four, you get 16. 3, you get 4, three, 27. The so 1728, this will have a volume of 27, this will have a volume of 27, 27 into 8, 216, 729, 729. And my original cube had side of 12 units. My new cubes will have sides of 3, 3, 6, 9, Nine. Right. Surface area here is six into twelve square. It will be six into three square plus three square plus six square plus nine square plus nine square. Sum of the surface areas of these five cubes exceeds the surface area of the original cube. So this, the, the six goes off on both sides. This will be nine plus nine plus 36, plus 81, plus 81, that is 144. 162, plus 18, 180, plus 36, 216, and 144. So how much does it exceed by? It exceeds by 72, percentage of 144, 50%. Key thing is to assume the original number as 12 units. So that simplifies life. We're looking for a number that's a multiple of 3 and of 4. Then this whole question becomes far simpler. Ball of diameter four centimeters kept on top of a hollow cylinder standing vertically. Wonderful. The height of the cylinder is three centimeters, but its volume is nine pi centimeter cube. Pi r square height is nine pi. Height is three. Pi into r square into three is nine pi. R is root three. Wonderful question. Wonderful question. So this radius is only root 3. Pi r square height. Pi into root 3 into root 3 into 3 is 9 pi. So this is root 3. So the diameter will be 2 root 3. But you're placing a ball of diameter 4 centimeter on it. The beauty of this is that the ball won't go and fit completely into this. So the ball is going to be sitting like this. The ball has a diameter of four. The mouth of the, the maximum point of the ball is broader than the hole with which it can slide into. Or 
if you notice this diagram, it's a wonderful diagram to imagine. This length is 2. This part is root 3. From the center to this point, what happens here? So from the center to here, and this, this will be a right angle triangle. This is 2, this is root 3, this is 1. Or the center of the ball is a distance of 1 unit from the lid of the cylinder. The height of the cylinder is 3 centimeters. From there, one more unit, you get to the center of the ball. And then two more units to get to the top of the ball. Topmost point of the ball from the base of the cylinder is 3 plus 3, 6 centimeters. Wonderful question. Cylinder on top of which a ball is placed, but the ball is bigger. So some part of the ball will go in, but not entirely, not half of the ball. That's what we need to crack. ABC be a right angle triangle with BC as the hypotenuse. Lengths of AB and AC are 15 and 20. Oh, I got this. 15, 20, 25. I like these triangles. I'm a big fan of Pythagoras. So this is B, C, A. AB and AC are 15 and 20. The minimum possible time in minutes to reach the hypotenuse from A at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. So we're going directly here. So area of this triangle is half into 15 into 20. That should be half into 25 into height. Perpendicular distance, the shortest distance. And to find the altitude AD to BC using this area of the triangle. So half and half disappear. 24 is to 5. This is 3, 12 units. So the distance is 12 kilometers. You're traveling at 30 kilometers per hour. 12 by 30 kilometers is 2 by 5. You'll take 2 fifths of an hour or 24 minutes. We want to find how much in, what is the minimum possible time in minutes. Travel the shortest distance, you'll do it in the minimum possible time. Shortest distance is 12 kilometers, 12 by 30, 2 by 5, 24 minutes. I can't believe that this is happening again. We've got to assume that this doesn't happen in the real exam. So, once again, I've shut down my PowerPoint. We're ending this now, force hard booting it then we'll start all over again so you've got to cut me some slack for this so i will because of this i'm going to blame the, all my mistakes on this one thing and so close this down back here we go i think we were in question number 21 20 we are done at 20 we have done 21 suppose log x to the base 3 is log 12 to the base a and x and y are positive numbers wonderful so 3 power a equals x, 12 power a equals y. g is the geometric mean of x and y. g equals square root of xy equals square root of 3 power a into 12 power a. This is 36 power a square root or 6 power this is square root of 6 power 6 square whole power a 6 power 2a whole power 1 by 2 or let me just think about this 36 power a is square root of 6 power 2a 6 power 2a whole power 1 by 2 this is 6 power a so log of 6 power a to the base 6 is a is what you're looking for. Plus 1 equal to x square. That means x square minus x minus 1 equal to 0. We want to find 2x power 4. We can find the roots and then solve them and then find 2x power 4. I'm just thinking whether there's a better method of doing this. 2x power 4. x power 4 is x plus 1 whole square. x square plus 2x plus 1. We're looking for 2x square plus 4x plus 1. What that value is.
2x square plus 4x plus 2. We want to find this value. x plus 1 equals x square. So x power 4 is x plus 1 the whole square, which is x square plus 2x plus 1. 2x power 4 is this number. This is what we want to find. 2x square is 2x plus 2 plus 4x plus 2. We're looking to find 6x plus 4. That's what we need to find. So now let's go back to this. So x square minus x minus 1 is 0. This is uh, 1 plus or minus square root of b square is 1 plus 4 by 2. So 1 plus or minus root 5 by 2 or this is root 5 plus 1 by 2 into 6 plus 4 is what we're looking for. And so we're looking at positive number only. So this is 3 times. 3 root 5 plus 3 plus 4, 3 root 5 plus 7, 7 plus 3 root 5. I think there's a better method for that, but I can't, I can't be asked. Log of 0 0.008 to the base root 5. 0 0.008 whole power something is 5 power 1 by 2. 0 0.008 is 0.2 whole cube. 1 by 5 whole cube. This is 5 power minus 3 whole power x is 5 power 1 by 2. Minus 3x equals 1 by 2. Or x is minus 1 by 6. Okay. Root 3 power y is 81. 3 power 1 by 2 whole power y is 3 power 4. y is 8. So we are looking for minus 1 by 6 plus 8 minus 7 or 1 minus 1 by 6 5 by 6 done that was easy 9 part 2 x minus 1 minus 81 part x minus 1 is 1944 9 part 2 x minus 1 minus 9 power 2 whole part x minus 1 equals 1944 9 part 2 x minus 1 minus 9 power 2 x minus 2 is 1944 9 power 2x minus 2 into 9 minus 1 is 1944. The 1944 should be a multiple of 8. 1944 by 8. So this 234 is 3. 334 is 4. 243. 9 power 2x minus 2 is 243. 243, this is, this is 3 square whole power 2x minus 2 is 3 power 5. 4x minus 4 equals 5. 4x equals 9, x is 9 by 4 done. Number of solutions x minus y minus z equal to 25. I'm not doing this. I'll come back to this later. I've skipped 13 and I've skipped 25. Inequality n minus 5 into n minus 10 minus 3 times n minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. n square minus 5n minus 10n plus 50. Minus 3n plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. n square minus 15 18n plus 56 is less than or equal to 0. Just checking whether I'm doing the numbers right. Minus 3n plus 6 plus 50 plus 6 plus 56 n square minus 18n plus 56 is less than or equal to 0. So what does this give us exactly? Uh, can I factorize this? There's a 56 there. To break this is 7 into 11. There's got to be a 7 sitting there. It doesn't quite work. So I'm going to go towards the... Um, oops. Completion of squares method. So this is going to write this as n square minus 18n plus 81 minus 81 plus 56 is less than or equal to 0. 81 plus 56, 25. 
that is a perfect square. I'm doing something silly with the factorization. 14 into 4, so, so n minus 4 into n minus 14 is less than or equal to 0. I think I just embarrassed myself a little bit there. So n should lie between 4 and 14. It can be 4, it can be 14. So it can be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 11 values. Wow, I'm done. I'm getting time. f1 of x is x squared plus 11x plus n. f2 of x is x. Then the largest positive integer n for which f1 of x equal to f2 of x has two distinct real roots. x squared plus 11x plus n equal to x has two distinct real roots x square plus 11x plus x square plus 10x plus n equal to 0. We should have two distinct roots or discriminant should be greater than 0. b square minus 4ac 100 minus 4n should be greater than 0 or n the lax maximum possible value of n is 24. If it were 25, it will have only two equal real roots. We're looking for two distinct real roots. So it cannot be 25. The maximum possible value is 24. A, B, C, and B are integers such that A plus B plus C plus D is 30. And the minimum possible value of A minus B the whole square plus A minus C the whole square plus A minus D the whole square. Very interesting. I'm going to come back to this. So I'm going to 13, 25, 28 I have left. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and J, K, five diameters of a circle with center O. A, B, C, D, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, uh, J, K. How many ways can three points be chosen out of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, and K? And O in order to form a triangle. Any three points out of these to form a triangle. Some of uh, these are 10 points. No three of the remaining 10 are collinear. And so these 11. Of the remaining 10, no 3 can be collinear because they're on a circle. So brilliant. So now I know the answer. So there are I could select some 3 out of this in 11 C3 base. That's a starting point. Any 3 on the triangle, that will form a triangle. Life is good. And so if I have any 3 from here, that will form a triangle. If I involve O and some 2 points, that will also be a triangle. And the only place where that won't be a triangle if I select the diameter itself. So there are five diameters. I can't select these five. I cannot select AOB, EOF, GOH, and all that. 11C3 minus 5. 11 into 10 into 9 by 6. 3, sorry, 2, 3 by 2. And then 5, 15 into 11. 165 minus 5, which is 160. Or we do 10 C3, select some 3 out of this, 10 into 9 into 8 by 6, 4 by 3, 3, just 120. Plus, we say any 2 of these 10, 10 C2. Just 10 into 9 by 2, which is 45, except the end points of the diameters, those 5, we subtract. 120 plus 45 minus 5, the answer we are looking for is 160. This I like. Shortest distance at the point half comma one from the curve y equal to mod. Uh, I'm not doing this. So 30 goes into the pot again. I'll come back. So unfortunately, I don't remember the question that I've skipped to go over the whole thing all over again. We'll come back to that. The square of the seventh term of an arithmetic progression with positive common difference equals the product of the third and seventeenth terms. And the ratio of the first term to the common difference. Third and seventeenth terms. Square of the seventh term. a plus 6d whole square product of so a plus 2d into a plus 16d uh, product of the third and 17 terms so a square plus 12d plus 36 equals a square plus 12ad a square plus 2ad 
plus 16 into plus 16 AD plus 32 D square. Twelve AD plus thirty six. Two AD plus is equals eighteen AD plus thirty two D square. So six AD plus thirty six is thirty two D square. We want to find the ratio of the first term to the common difference. We want to find A by D. So divide by D square. Six times A by D. Six K. Divide by D, 6A plus 36 by D equals 32D. No, 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 no. 32D square minus 6AD minus 36 equal to 0. A plus six B oh, thirty six D square. That is where the mistake is. So twelve AD plus thirty six D square equals eighteen AD plus thirty two D square. Four D square equals six AD. One D we can knock off. Two D equal to three A. A by D. Is 2 by 3, 2 is to 3. First term to common difference is 2 is to 3. In how many ways can seven identical erasers be distributed among four kids in such a way that each kid gets at least one eraser, but nobody gets more than two erasers, more than three erasers? Super. So A plus B plus C plus D equal to 7. And so let's first satisfy this at least one eraser. And so one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have to place some plus symbols in three places. This is six C3, which is 20 ways. Each kid gets at least one eraser is 20 ways. We've not worried about more than, nobody gets more than three. If somebody gets more than three, then you have to get at least four. Each one gets at least one. So we are looking at one, 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 four in some way. That can be done in four ways. 20 minus 4 equal to 16. Looking for 16. Mm -hmm. Done. G of f of f of 3. Let's find f of 3 first. 5 into 3 plus 2 by 3 into 3 minus 5. So it's a 15 plus 2. I hate this. 15 plus 2 is 17. 3 into 3, 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. 5 into 17 by 4 plus 2 by 3 into 17 by 4 minus 5. So 5 into 17 is 85 by 4, 85 plus 8 by 4 by 3 into 17, 51 minus 20, 31 by 4. This is 93 by 31, which is 3. We want to find g of 3. 9 minus 6 minus 1, why not 2? So it did simplify well, so I'm not complaining. I can't believe this is happening again. Just when I'm going to jump into the last question. PowerPoint is really misbehaving because I think I'm being a little uh, funny with the, with the marker. I won't do quickly, so I'm stamping on it really hard. So I think that is what is causing the damage. I'm going to shut off this. I'm going to go back here. We need to do the last question. And if I, rem if I remember correct, we need to do 13, 25, and something in the middle. So let's go back here to this one. A1, A2, A3, till A3n is an arithmetic progression. A1 is 3, A2 is 7. A1 plus A2 plus A3 till A3n is 1830. What is the smallest positive integer m? I'm not able to get this. So if it m times a1 plus a2 till a. Okay, 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 fine. This is fine. 
we need to find n. So first term is 3. Common difference is 2. So n by 2 into 2 into 3 plus n minus 1 into 4 equals 1830. And so n by 2 into 6 plus 4n minus 4 equals 1830. 6 minus 4 is 2. 4n plus 2. This becomes so 4n plus 2 by 2 is 2n plus 1 into n is 1830. And so you have to factorize 1830. I'm going to do it by a uh, this is 183 into 10 or 61 into 30. So this is 30, this is 61. That works. So n is 30. So our 3n is 30, n is 10. And so you need to add to sum up to 10 terms of this sequence. So we're doing 10 by 2 into 2 into 3 is 6 plus 10 minus 1, 9 into 4. Or 5 times 6 plus 36. Or 42 into 5, 210. And 210 into m is greater than 1830. 21 into m is greater than this. Let's divide this by 3, 61, 7. 7m is greater than 61. 7 into 8 doesn't work. 7 into 9 works. That's what you're looking for. Wonderful. So we still have time. So we've been on a good lucky streak. We're going to go on to question number, whichever one we like. 25. Nah, no, not 25. Again, it's hanging. I'm trying to move this too quickly. Microsoft not cooperating. I'm going to mark that down to if I get a poor score, that's what it's down to. If I get a good score, then it's still doing well. And if I keep the screen there and let it continue, it starts misbehaving. So question number 13. A plus 3 whole square is to B square. So A plus 3 is to B is 3k is to minus k or minus 3k is to k. a minus 1 is to b minus 1 is to, let's start with this, 2k is to k minus k. a minus 1 is 2k and b minus 1 is minus k or a minus 1 is minus 2k and b minus 1 is k. And so let's think about this. If a minus 1 equal to 2k, b minus 1 equal to minus k. But a is 2k plus 1, b is 1 minus k. Or a minus 1 is minus 2k, a is 1 minus 2k, b minus 1 is k, or b is k plus 1. And 2k plus 1 plus 3 the whole square. 2k plus 4 the whole square is to 1 minus k the whole square. This 9 is to 1. Doing this one. 2k plus 4 by 1 minus k is minus 3. 2k plus 4 is minus 3 plus 3k. 4 plus 3 is k. k is 7. That is a possibility. In which case the number would be 2k plus 1. 7 into 2, 14 plus 1, 15. Minus 7. A and B are 15 and minus 7. That is a possibility. So A minus 1 whole square, 14 square. Get K as 7 
minus 7. B is 1 minus K. K is 7. A is 2K plus 1, which is 15. B is 1 minus 7, which is minus 6. 15 and minus 6. A minus 1 whole square is 14 square. This works. So 15 and minus 6 are A and B. That is a possibility. Running short of time. 15 and minus 6. 5 is to minus 2. The ratio A is to B. Opposite signs. And what is the fund of ratio? Why are all of these numbers positive? I've solved this and I got the numbers to be 15 and minus 6. Let's see if we can solve this one. This strand is really tricky. 1 minus 2k and k plus 1. 1 minus 2k plus 3 is 4 minus 2k. by k plus 1 is minus 3. 4 minus 2k is minus 3k minus 3. 7 is minus k or k is minus 7. It's same 15 and minus 6 is what I'm getting. And the ratio a is to b. 15 is to minus 6. Or 5 is to minus 2. I'm assuming it's a square is to b square. Question is something is wrong. 5 is to minus 2, 25 is to 4. So choice B is D is what I'm marking. I want to leave that. I'm assuming it's a square is to b square. And something is wrong with the way we've copied the question. 25. X minus y minus z is 25. X is less than or equal to 40. Y is less than or equal to 12. Z is less than or equal to 12. X, Y, Z. So X should be positive integers. X should be greater than or equal to 27. I'm going to do this the brute force method. So X should be greater than or equal to 27. Let's say X is 27 x minus y minus z is 25 so 27 minus 1 minus 1 is 25 27 there's one value x is 28 and y plus z is 3 1 2 2 1 the number of integer solutions for this is y and z are less than or equal to 12, 12 is fine. Integer solution is, so 27 minus 1 minus 1 is 25. So when x is 27, two values, y plus z add up to 2. Number of ways in which it is possible is just 1. n minus 1, c1. To put just a plus symbol. So y plus z is 3 is 2. y plus z is 4. 1, 1, 1, 1, 3 values. So 27, 28, 29, 30, all the way till 39. Y plus Z should add up to 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way till 14. 39 minus 14 is 25. Total 20, 37, total 12. The number of ways in which possible 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way till 11. 11 plus 1. So 11 into 12 by 2, 11 into 66 ways are in the bag. Now we will do for y plus z equal to 13, y plus z equal to 14. This can happen in 12 ways, but there is 1, 12, 2, 11, 3, 10 and so on up till 12, 1. But of these 12 ways, 2 don't work. So 10 ways, the first and the last won't work. So 66 plus 10, 76. Then y plus z equal to 14. That can happen in 13 ways. 1 plus 13, 2 plus 12, all the way till 13 plus 1. Of these 13 ways, the last four won't. So 1 and 13, 2 and 12, 
13 and 1, 12 and 2, they can't work. So sorry, less than or equal to 12. So it can be 12. Room that the 66 are in the bag. Then this 1 and 12, all 12 will be in the bag, 78. And of the 13, 1, 2 will get left out. So we're having 1 and 13 that goes off and 13 and 1 that goes off. So 2 get out out of 13 plus 11, I get this 89 possible values. 66 or 11 into 12 by 2. Sorry, 12 into 13 by 2, 78. Plus not all 13, but only 11. I get it as 89. The answer says 87. Less than or equal to 40. To worry about x being 40 also, in which case it will become 15. So let's do this. 78 plus 11, 89. Plus when x is 40, these two add up to 15. From 1, 14, all the way to 14, 1. Of these 14 and 13, four values will get knocked out. Plus 10, so that is 99. That's what I'm marking, 99. I'm not sure about this, but I'm marking that. Fine, so 66, 78, 89, 99. F one more, this I have done. This we have done. I don't even remember the question that I skipped this one, but my time is out. So I'm going to skip this one, and I'm going to revert to the live screen. How do we do that? Stop sharing. So I'm hopefully now back to the live screen. You guys could be able to see the question. So is there a solution PDF for this? I'm just going to look at the questions. So we went spilled over by two minutes and I and I skipped one question. I think that's a, a good question. I should have gotten it right. So I still, I still rankles. So I, I think I overshot that time marker by about uh, two minutes. But we had a bunch of disruptions which would have otherwise not been there. So I'm going to excuse myself for that. And, and there was one question which was uh, muddled up. It should have been A square is to B square, I think. I'm pretty confident it should have been A square is to B square. There's one question that I've skipped. A minus B whole square plus A minus C whole square plus A minus D whole square. This is practically make all four numbers equal. So put it as 8, 7, 7, 8 or something like that. Never got it right. So it is 1 plus 1, 2. Minimum possible value is 2. It's a sitter that I skipped. And so I, I, I think in, in a hurry, I, uh, I skipped that. It's probably a simple question. I quite enjoyed myself. Good session. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself as well. Uh, we will shoot to do the second session in Quant as well and then see what we can do that. Super. Wonderful, guys. I hope uh, you learned quite some bit. I'm going to sign off and we'll catch you back in, say, a week's time or three, four days' time to do the second session in Quant from CAT 2017. Signing off, best wishes for Kat.